Hey, this is Saf Levado from WickedRef.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, we're going to learn how to play a fingerstyle arrangement of Fly Me to the Moon, the classic jazz song. Uh, I've made this arrangement especially for you guys and girls. So first, I'm going to play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes. And then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen and everything. So before we begin the lesson, let's play this. It goes like this. We begin with D minor 7. D minor 7, uh, tab wise, is 1 1 2 on the E, B, and G strings with an open D string. Okay? It's almost an F chord, just instead of the F bass, we play a D bass. Okay? That's, that's just how chords go. You change one note, you change the entire chord. And sometimes, one chord can be called three or four different names. Never mind that now. Um, this is not a lesson in chord theory, so <laughs> mercifully. So um, D minor seven, you just pick the entire chord. And then you play this. Okay, just E, open E string, three and one on the B string. And then we play G minor seven. Now G minor seven, you can either put on the entire chord, barring the third fret and putting another finger on five on the A string, but you don't have to put anything on except for the bar, because if you want a leaner sound, a leaner chord sound, um, then you just pick strings, um, E, the E bass, strings, E, D, and G. Okay, but if you want a heavier sound, a more condensed sound, you can pick this note, you can pick the D note, this is a D note, uh, on the A string, and make it a really condensed kind of chord. But I don't like that sound, so I play the leaner sound, I play this. Just strings uh, 6, 3, and 4. And then this. Okay, it's... Um, the G string on three, still, and then the B string on three, and then I add the pinky on six on the B string. Okay, so it's three, three, and three on uh, the E, G, and D string, and then three and three on the G string and the B string, and then six on the, uh, on the B string. This is, of course, an F note. Okay, but um, we could do it like this. Okay, but we want to keep the chord ringing as, as much as possible, so... Okay? The chord is still ringing. And then, open E string, and then we pick a C7 chord. Okay, a C7 chord is just C, and you add the pinky on three on the G string. Okay, so it sounds like this. Um, um. Okay, what I like to do is this little rhythm. Okay, I pick the open E string, the melody note, and then I pick the C bass, and then I pick the rest of the chord. Okay, uh, gives it a kind of jazzy, jumpy feel. Uh, let's hear it together. Okay? But you don't have 
have to. You can uh, make your own arrangement of this. This is just my arrangement. You don't have to play my arrangement. You can make your own arrangement. You can play it in whatever um, rhythm you want to hear, whatever, whatever rhythm you feel comfortable with. You can play it like this. Okay, if it sounds good to you or to just practice this at first and then build your own rhythm. Um, so we were here. And then this. Okay, this is the melody. It's 3-1 on the B string, and then 3-2 on the G string. But the 2 um, is already the beginning of the F major 7 chord, so you want to keep that in mind because you want to build the F major 7 chord when you play uh, when you play the A note. This is an A note, so okay. I put the A, the F major 7 like this uh, because I only use these notes, so I don't see any reason I should put this on. It's kind of clammy, so. I use my thumb for the F bass uh, and uh, two fingers for uh, the second fret on the G and D strings. Okay, you can do it like this too, but I find the thumb comfortable. I'm a finger style player, so uh, that's that's just one trick to keep things um, to keep the fingers free to solo over chords. Uh, so I use the sound, the sound, you don't have to. You can do this. Okay, works fine. So, and then I do this. Um, this is just F major 7, turning into F7. Okay, I just change uh, from 2 to 1 on the D string. Um, in from an E note to an E flat note, so that's that's usually what I do. You can uh, you can keep it an F major seven. You don't have to turn it into an F seven. You can keep it an F ma uh, major seven. So uh, let's stop talking for a minute and play it from the beginning. to B flat major 7, okay? Uh, instead of having two major 7 notes, ah, notes, chords, instead of having two consecutive major 7 chords, um, and major 7 chords are very, very pleasant for the ear, so I like to spice it up a bit by turning one of them into a 7, and the 7 itself leads to the next major 7 chord. So um, it makes sense both musically and both for the ear because instead of just being too pleasant for a while, it's pleasant, spicy, pleasant again. Uh, I hope you get what I'm trying to say. It's really, really difficult talking about music. Uh, Elvis Costello once said, talking about music is like dancing about architecture. And he's right. Uh, you can't talk about music. Um, without sounding ridiculous. So, pleasant, spicy, pleasant. It's not food, it's music, but you try explaining it an another way. Um, anyway, stop talking. B flat major 7. Okay? Um, you bar the first fret, and it's kind of like, it's D7 shape, uh, but uh, uh, one string down, and um, okay, it's an A shape with the middle note taken back one fret. Okay, uh, if you if it helps you memorize the shape. So it's this. Okay, um, you pick strings uh, two, three, four, and five. And on the B string, you take the pinky off, making it 
um, a C note, okay, from three to one. Okay, this is the melody. And then you put the pinky on three on the G string and take it off again, uh, and you still have the two on the G string, so it's three one on the B string, three two on the G string. Okay, I hope you recognize this because you've played the same melody a minute ago um, on the C7. Okay, only in a different context because it was on a different chord. And then, th remember, this is B flat major 7. And then this. Okay? Um, it's E minor turning into um, an E minor 7 flat 5. Uh, but we just play these notes. We don't play the entire chord, we just play these notes inside the chord. So it's this, it's, um, you put first finger on the D string on 5, third finger on 7 on the A string, and you uh, play the D, A, and E strings, okay? This, this is no mistake, this is an octave, it's the same note, it's E, and then you add your pinky on 7 on the D string, okay, so you play this. And then you do this. You don't have to put on the entire minor 7 flat 5 chord. Um, you just bar the 7th fret and you put your 2nd finger on the D string on 8. Okay, so you play this. You play 7 and 8 on the A and D strings and then 7 on the G string. Got it? It's just this. Um, and together they sound like this. Okay. Uh, now for the final, um, the final verse line. The final verse line is this. Okay. Um, it's A7. Now you can either play this or this, because both this and this are the same A bass. Um, for the purists, you want to practice the chord, you just put on a full A7 chord. Uh, it's not a full A7 chord, but it's a full jazz A7 chord. It's uh, 5 on the E string, 5 on the D string, 6 on the G string. Or you can do the same thing without the uh, without the E string. You just play the open A string. It's completely the same. Um, well, maybe except for a bit of a fatter sound when you play the E string instead of the A string and a fretted sound instead of an open string sound. But let's not go into technical details. Play whatever sounds good to you. Okay? Don't let anybody else tell you uh, you should play it like this. Why don't you play it like this? Because it's my version. It's my arrangement. That's what you tell them. It's your arrangement. You play whatever you want to play. Okay? Don't let anybody tell you you're playing something wrong. Because as long as it sounds good, it's not wrong. Um, so you play the A7. And then this. Um, just... 3, 2, 0 on the G string. 3, 2, open G string. And then this. Um, out of context, this sounds weird, but I'll play it through in a second and you will hear that it, it's fine. It's, it's into D minor 7 again. So it's 3 on the D string with your first finger and because you're uh, blocking the open D string, <clears throat> the D bass, you need to have the D bass here, okay, on 5 on the A string. But this sounds too empty. It's just an interval, it's not a chord yet. Uh, and this, this is too somber, it's just, it's a 
classical chord. It's okay. It, it's not. It doesn't fit. So the only solution I could find was this. Just adding the seven with the pinky on five on the G string. So it sounds like this. Okay. So. Um, and that's the verse, D minor 7, G minor 7, C7, F major 7, with an option to go into F7, B flat major 7, E minor into E minor 7 flat 5, A7, D minor 7 again. Okay, now um, I made a mistake playing this once and I corrected it while playing and created a chromatic lick out of this. And a friend heard me play it and started laughing and said it sounded Italian. So I thought I'd show you, and if you like it, you can play it. Um, it's pretty funny, it's this. Okay? Uh, and it is kind of Italian, it's chromatic. Okay, because I made a mistake and instead of going to three, I went to five. Because there's a dot. And sometimes when you play automatically, you make stupid mistakes. Okay? So you can do that. Why I just thought I'd show you. By the way, you can um, you can use chromatics if you want uh, here. Um, for example, okay, something like that. It's the same idea. It's the same Italian lick, Italian motif idea. But um, if you want to, you can use it. You can try and add little chromatics. No, no, what I did was I just added the uh, open B string and um, into the, the this line. And the open B string, of course, is 4 on the, uh, the G string, so it's, it's chromatic. So uh, together, it's, it sounds nice. Just small additions. Make your own arrangement. Um, that's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, chorus. Now the chorus has two endings. And you play the chorus once with the first ending, and then you play the entire verse again, and then you play the chorus with the second ending. I'll show you in a second. So um, you're here on the D minor 7. Now, the chorus begins like this. It's back to G minor, and uh, you need to prepare for the G minor, so I play this with my pinky. Um, okay, it's just seven and five on the D string, and then when I play the five, I bar the third fret. And then I play both B and G strings, strings two and three, uh, together. Okay? And then... Okay? It's um, C7, just C7. I pick the bass and then the rest of the chord. And then... Uh, one zero on the E string and then one on the B string and when you play this C note, one on the B string you put on the F major 7 again okay, so it's um, so it sounds like this B flat major 
major 7 again. Now, you can use the F7 again, but I don't because if I used it in the verse, I won't use it in the chorus as well because then it loses its magic. So here, the pleasant sound works for me. But if you want to use the spicier F7 sound, by all means, go ahead and do it. Uh, and it will sound like this. Okay? It works as well. I actually kind of like it. Um, and then this. Um, okay, this note, the first melody note, um, three on the D string is inside the B, the B flat major seven chord. But then you need this. This is G minor six. It's three on the E string, two on the D string, and three on the G string as well. Okay, so it's it's three, two. Three. So um, that's the chord. So okay, but because we need to transition between the B flat major seven and the G minor six, I put the first finger on two first, and then I put these two fingers and I play this. Just the bass and the rest of the chord. So, okay, that's how I do it. You you may find a better way. Um, oh, C seven again, and then uh, this. Okay, uh, and this goes into F major 7 again. I'm warning you, you need to put the chord on on the A note. Again, just like in the verse. So it's 3-1 on, uh, on the B string and 2 on the G string with an F major 7 built. <sighs> okay, so... Up to here, we're all fine. Again, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the second ending and how to explain how the, um, where, where to change it into the second ending, but we're not there yet, so I'll stop thinking about it. Um, so, the, the chorus. Just a two five one into a two five one is a jazz trick. It's not only a jazz trick, but it's mainly a jazz trick uh, to uh, um, bring you back into into whatever chord they want to bring you back. Uh, so it's just this, and you're back into the D minor seven. It's at some um, uh, E minor seven flat five. Okay, this time played in full. It's um, from second string to fifth string, it's eight, seven, eight, seven, okay? And then it's a seven, okay? You can play like this, okay? Giving it a jazzy feel. Just the bass, then the rest of the chord, then the bass, then the rest of the chord. Now, the interesting about these two is that you can play them in full or you can use the open bass notes. Okay? Whatever sounds good to you. And then you play the verse and the chorus again. I'll show you up to where. That's it. This is where you change. Okay, you play the C, the C7, 
And then instead of this, you do this. Okay, it's one zero on the E string. And then this. This is an F chord. C-shaped bar on five. Okay, and you pick five on the E string. And um, then the bass and then the rest of the chord. And then D7, uh, shaped like a C7, up two frets, the bass is on five, uh, first finger on three, okay, that's it, you don't pick the E string, you pick strings two, three, four, and five, and then this, this little, this beautiful chord, it's G minor seven, nine or G minor seven add nine um, the way to do this is is to use this melody note to prepare the chord third finger on five on the E string and then you bar the third fret and use your pinky on six on the B string okay you play the A note once, then the second time around along with the G bass, and then the rest of the chord. Got it? So you are here. And then, guess what? C7. And then the final, the final, um, Melody line. Um, okay, it's one zero one on the E string and an F major seven again. Now um, you can uh, you can play it um, again. You can. Okay, you can 251 into it. We're going to end it on a 251, but you can uh, just do uh, the E minor 7 flat 5 again to the A7 again to the beginning, the D minor 7 again, and do a second run. And on the second run, you can end on uh, an F major 7. Okay? An open E string instead of you can do this or an F major 7 add 9 okay with 3 on the E string now the thumb becomes uncomfortable, so I barred the first fret, uh, and then it, it and it, it sounds good. Um, it all depends on what sound you want to get on your final note. Um, so um, my ending is. E minor 7 flat 5 and then A flat 13 which is A7 along with the pinky on 6 on the B string so we have 5 5 6 6 and then this uh, jazz, jazz endings jazz ending chords are a musician's way of showing how sophisticated his ear is, his or hers. Um, and it's kind of a joke as well, because sometimes um, you'll bring out a really interesting chord, um, which completely contrasts the rest of the, uh, of the song. For example, the ending chord here should be this, because it's D minor. And this is D minor 6, 9, or D minor 6 at 9, but I turned it into D major. D 
major six at nine or G or, or D major six nine or D six nine uh, without major is D six nine or D six at nine because that's kind of that's kind of a joke it's it's kind of joking musically um, and by the way if you want to hear a band that 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 they're unbelievable they're called the bad plus and they use these kind of this these this harmonies all the time and their music is hilarious and if you haven't heard hilarious music in your life listen to the bad plus they're unbelievable uh, you're gonna laugh your asses off uh, when you hear their music um, they use these kinds of unexpected harmonies all the time in the funniest ways and also odd time signatures and such so this this is just my ending you don't have to do this you can end on D minor 7 but I like to end on uh, D6 9 D6 9 is um, Pinky on five on the B string, then on the G D and A strings it's just three four five. So it's five three four five. Okay. Now a D minor six and nine is just instead of four on the D string you take it back to three. You just bar it. Okay. That's the normal jazz ending for a minor song uh, and that's why I turned it into major just because I can and you can too if you don't find this uh, good sounding just finish on D minor 7 or experiment with a lot more sound um, so that's fly me to the moon congratulations for learning this before you go please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already uh, I've got a ton of lessons over there already uh, for you to learn for free everything is free and will always be free uh, my goal is to teach the world guitar all I ask in return is for you to tell other people about Lick and Riff and about this channel and that there are lessons, free lessons, finger style lessons, and um, hopefully more than just finger style in the future. Um, and um, go to the website, download the tab, it's also for free. And while you're there, there's a donation button if you want to give something back for this lesson, for any lessons, for um, my work in general, just click the donation button and I'll be grateful for any donation whatsoever. And uh, go practice this. Go get this under your fingers. It's a beautiful song. I hope you like the arrangement. And um, I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching.